Ah, hello there. And is everybody doing well today? Oh, I am so delighted to hear that. And me? Oh, yes. Still vertical and still above the grass. <laughs> so, where are we going to fly to today, you're asking? Well, good question. I had a, a message from a YouTuber by the name of Saul Akbari. Let me read it to you because it really is a very nice little message. He said, Yet another wonderful video, Father Dane. Your channel brings me such enjoyment. I am deeply honored to be able to do that. He said, You've completed the flight for me before, so if I may be cheeky enough to make another request. We recently went to Orlando from Gatwick via Dublin. I thoroughly enjoyed the leg between Gatwick and Dublin, so perhaps if you get the time, you could complete the Aer Lingus flight from Gatwick to Dublin for me. Right, I will indeed. So today we're going to go from Gatwick, at just outside of London, to Dublin, and we'll follow the Aer Lingus route that he took. Now that Aer Lingus flight is flight 231. 231. And Aer Lingus is the carrier that does that. So we will follow that same route. And if you want to look it up on Flight Aware, it is EI 231, and that will bring up the history. Now why does Aer Lingus uh, take people to Orlando and stop off at Dublin? Well, you may not realize this, many people may not anyway, but Dublin actually has a US border control right there. They operate it right in Dublin itself. So if you're going to go to America, you can be processed through immigration, customs, and all the rest of it, right then and there in Dublin. Saves a lot of time, don't you think? <laughs> so we have some excellent scenery for this particular leg. And it's the Gatwick EGKK, that's the code for Gatwick. The EGKK airport scenery is made by Gary at UK2000. UK2000. And the Dublin EIDW airport scenery that's made by MK Studios. Right. Okay, so we're ready to do it. So first of all, of course, we need to go into pre-flight. All right, so here we are looking at Flight Aware and at the Aer Lingus Flight 231. Here you can see the Code designators EIN231 or EI231. Either of those will bring this particular page up. This one departed from uh, Gatwick, London, Gate 5, and arrived in Dublin. Apparently, it was 31 minutes late departing and 29 minutes late arriving, so they did make up the time. This one, of course, is a uh, landed four hours and 50 minutes ago, according to this chart. So we're looking at a fairly recent flight. And looking at it down here, let's see. The, here we are. Here's Gatwick down here. And it took all the way over southern Wales, across the Irish Sea, and then into Dublin. So let's look at the... They were at 32,000 feet. So we will model that as best we can. And 
looking at the arrival in Dublin. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's a straight in run that they made. So it may well have come straight into runway 28, which is the favored runway there. All right, let's have a look at Windy. Here you can see, well, here's London. This is the greater area of London right here. And just to the south, this is where Gatwick is located. This is the uh, Gatwick Airport right there. And the wind looks like it's coming pretty much from the north. It's saying wind is 360 degrees, 11 knots, varying between 330 and 60 degrees. Ceiling and visibility okay. VFR conditions. Temperature 16 degrees. It's a little cool here at this time of year. Dew point 5 degrees. QNH 1020. Looking at the runways, I'm not sure which ones actually we would be assigned, but if I remember correctly, uh, stand number five is out here somewhere. So, uh, this is where they're at. So perhaps it would be on this runway right here that it would be going from. So 26 left. Uh, I don't know, but we can certainly find out when we go into sim brief. Here is Dublin. Here the wind is coming more from the northwest and it's sweeping right across the country and going over into the Irish Sea here. So it looks for all the world like we'd be coming in on runway 28 because the wind is 290 degrees at 12 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, few clouds at 1800 feet, broken at 4200. Temperature is a little cooler there in Ireland at 13 degrees. And Q&H 1023 is also a little higher as well, but it is also VFR. And for the runways, as I said, my suspicion is that we'll be coming in on runway 28. Now, it is true that the all these runways, there are now this runway, this one, and this one, are all operational in Dublin right now. But, unfortunately, MK Studios hasn't issued an update yet for the airport scenery since this has, you know, only in the last few weeks has this part been uh, completed. So, technically, we only have this one runway to contend with. So, it's either going to be coming into runway 28 or it will be coming in on uh, the other one, uh, 10 left, or 10 right in this case. So, so 28 left, 10 right. But this is now open, but not available on the MK Studios uh, airport scenery. All right, going into Sim Brief, of course, we are Ryanair. And we are 186. We're departing from EGKK. And we're going to go to EIDW. And, oh, EGCC is the alternate. I believe that is Manchester. We'll see in a moment. We are Ryanair 186. And there is our airframe. All of this information, by the way, is all uh, from a real aircraft of that tail name and registration. So everything that is in this program is from the real aeroplane. So that's how they managed to calculate the fuel burn, the fuel requirements, weight balance, takeoff speeds, landing speeds, and etc. Cruise profile is six. Registration is right here. It says that the scheduled flight time is 1 hour 25. Departing runway 08 right <laughs> and arrival on 28 right, well, will actually be on 28 left. 
because the 28 write is not uh, not operational. And we will be going to 320 just like the previous one. We'll be full, of course, and we will be having one ton of champagne and caviar. Yes, indeed, something to cheer about. And here is the, the route. This is the information. Route distance is 295 nautical miles. So, we have the information. Everything is there. So, let's go on up and we will save the flight and generate the flight plan. Well, here's the summary. Here we go. Flight number is 186, aircraft 737. Dash 800, origin, Gatwick, destination Dublin, alternate is Manchester. Cruising altitude is 320 and airtime 59 minutes. We'll be requiring 6,163 kilograms of fuel. That's almost 6.2 metric tons. And there's the route. No dispatcher remarks. And here you can see the, the full route going from Gatwick straight across to Dublin with a run to Manchester should things not work out too well for us. Ryanair 186 is our designation. Here we've got flight level 320. And here is the flight route itself. The first part, the IMVRU1 Zulu, that is the, that's the standard instrument departure. This one is the STAR, the standard instrument approach. And we'll be taking Invo, then the November 6-3 to VOUGA, then the November 14 to Medog, and then finally the Lima 18 to Ablin before making our approach right there. EGCC, this is Manchester, and here is the information for Manchester. We'll need to know that we're cost index 6. We'll need to know the average wind speed and direction for uh, programming into the uh, FMC. We'll need to ensure that we have enough fuel on board and here the reserves are 2,748. That's pretty much 2.7 metric tons and the trip and tax is 2,771 kilograms. It says no tankering recommended. This is the full route and I'll be posting this in the description box below the video. Now we are going to need to know the information for the descent, but for flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet, and for flight level 150, which is 15,000 feet, and for flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet. And looking at the wind aloft on this is for flight level 340, which is 2,000 feet above us. This previous one is for 300, which is 30,000 feet and 2,000 feet below, but they're pretty close. In any event, we're going to be facing some fairly stiff headwinds going across. And it is that time of year when we get an awful lot of westerly and northwesterly winds as autumn starts to go into winter. And this is quite typical for this time of year. So it means bucking headwinds means that it will take us a little longer and it will be a little bit more costly in fuel. And at today's rates for the fuel, <laughs> just as well that this is phantom fuel that we're using because otherwise I'd never be able to afford it. And here is the vertical profile. 
EGKK, there's our des uh, departure, climbing up, going across, there's the top of descent, all the way down then into EIDW, which of course is Dublin. And here you can see all of the headwinds that we're going to be facing at all of these uh, altitudes, so we're not going to escape it. Right here, this dotted blue line, this is the tropopause, but it's a fairly stable one. It doesn't have any ups and downs, so perhaps the air will be fairly stable once we get to our cruising altitude. All right, let's go into Navigraph charts. All right, we click on flights, we click on new flights, and we bring it in from SimBrief, and there's the one that we just did. Clicking on the origin, we open the charts list. We need to know airport information and parking stands. Let's look at that because right here, this is it, look at the South Terminal, right there, that is Stand 5, and that is the one that they departed from, that uh, flight that we were just looking at. So we'll be parked there, if we can, if it's not uh, already occupied, so we'll try to follow this as close as we can. And it says we'll be using the Invo 1 Zulu departure. So it looks like it's going to have us departing in that direction, which is interesting because the wind was blowing in a different direction. Oh, well, that's going to be interesting. Well, we'll have to see. The wind is supposed to be variable, but we'll find out whether this is going to be the case or not. I'll pin that to the bottom. Over here, now I'm going to click on the charts list. We're going to need to know, of course, the airport, and we'll need to know the parking stands. And we'll use the parking stands east, because Right here, Pier 1, this is all Ryanair aircraft that actually uses this. But one of these um, is either this pier or this pier is where all the Aer Lingus flights go in and out of. We'll try to follow the same one. And it says runway 28 left. So let's bring that up. Here we go. Category 23, ILS runway 2328 left. Pin that and let's have a look at that. So here's the information. And here's the initial approach fix coming into LAPMO, which is the in intermediate fix. And then that would be then straight down here to come into final. Okay, we'll, on the approaches, so we'll be coming in on, from Avenue, so it'll be ILS runway 27 and coming in on that one. And you can see it has joined up the line to make it a completed journey there. Okay, and this is the overlay chart for the arrival. And I'll pin that to the bottom, brings us in here and then swings across over to runway 28 left. All right, we've pretty much got everything we need. So just need to close all of this down. And there's our route. So what do you think, Sol? Are we good to go? All right, then let's get into the cockpit, shall we? And 
get things started. Well, hello, Saul Ackbury. Do come on in and take your seat. You've been in here before, so you know what we do. So buckle up and let me tell you that I've been all the way around the aircraft. I've checked the tires, give them a good kick. And I've made sure all of the fuselage has been wiped down and polished. We are first class today. And of course, I cleaned the windows. They are sparkling, absolutely crystal clear. Look, look how clean they are. It's almost like there's no glass in them at all. <laughs> so, we are here at Gatwick Airport. That is E-G-K-K. Now, this airport scenery is made by Gary at UK 2000, so it's very detailed. But we are at stand number three. I had hoped to be at stand number five, which is where that uh, Aer Lingus flight departed from to go to uh, Dublin. I don't know if you were on the stand five, but stand five is just around the corner there and it is occupied. So I had to be content with stand three, which is just around the corner. There isn't much to see at this particular uh, where we're parked. So when we do the pushback and we get out, then I'll give a little bit of a circular view and let you see what the scenery looks like. Okay, we are all set. I'm loaded up with fuel. I have, let me get my notes here. We have 6,113 kilograms of fuel. That's 6.1 metric tons. <laughs> and at today's prices here in the UK, that would take a small fortune to pay for. I don't know what it's like at all, you know, in Ireland or in America or some of those other places where people pop on to watch. But let me tell you, here it is awful. So people who have cars are not very happy at the present moment. So that's the situation. But... We did spare no expense to get on board a ton of special cargo. We have champagne and we have caviar. And the champagne is French champagne. None of that other plonk that you can buy at the cut rate shops. We only have the best on Ryanair 186. Right. Well, you know what we do. First thing you have to do is adjust your seat. Very important. And then we go up here and we turn on the battery. Make sure that we have enough volts. Then turn on the fuel pumps. And then we start the APU. See the low oil pressure light has come on. In a moment this will start to climb. This is the on and off switch. Ah, there it is. See, it's starting to climb. It'll get up to about there and then it will descend and stabilize at a lower temperature there. This is the engine gas temperature of the APU, which is located in the tail of the aircraft. Now, when it stabilizes, I'm going to look for this light to come on. And when it comes on, ah, there it is. So now I can press that and up here, I can see that I have 115 volts. I've got this turned to the APU generator so that it shows me where, what the source voltage is and it is 115. So that's the starting of the aircraft. So now I'm going to Turn on the left and the right IRS. That's the GPS system. We need to start, get our starting position as you do with any GPS. You need to put in where you are and then it calculates everything from there. 
Then we turn on the galley, hopefully they're making us a cup of tea back there. And then emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seat belts. Over here I'm going to do the left and the right window heats. I'll leave the probes off for the moment. There I'm turning on the left and the right uh, hydraulic pumps. Over here, the forward service hatch is open and the equipment, that's the air stairs, they are down and the passengers, the self-loading cargo, will be coming out of that door in just a few minutes to climb on board. Then over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, the recirculating fans and the packs and listen. There's that rush of air going through that is now warming up the aeroplane. And why warming up? Because outside air temperature is only 16 degrees right here in Gatwick at the moment. That's not particularly brilliant, so we need to warm things up a little bit for our passengers. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll turn on the steady light and then that lets the ground crew know that we are in here and that we are messing about or <clears throat> programming the computers for takeoff. <laughs> now if you want to see where stand number three is, if you look on the little screen here on the side, you can see where we're parked. Now, num stand number five is actually on the other side, that's to the right of us. And I am reasonably assured that 26 left is the runway in operation, so we do not have very far to go to get to the active runway. So we're in a good location. Right, now it's time to program the FMC. So we go over here, we make sure that the air rack is in date and that the program is not showing any information that shows an error. Position initialization, we are at EGKK and we are at stand number three, so I'll put three in there and it comes right up with the actual coordinates for this stand. So I put that into the temporary down here and then I transfer it to this. Now our starting position is loaded into the program. Go to root, EGKK is our start, EIDW is our destination. And we are, of course, Ryanair 186. I know we're following um, Aer Lingus. We're following that Aer Lingus flight 231, but we are still Ryanair 186. So then I go to the next page. And here's where we put in the route directly from the flight plan. Our first port is Ember. So I am V U R is right there. We go direct to that. So then we take the November 63. So November 63 and that will take us then to Valga. So V O U G A. Then we take the November 1-4, so November 1-4, and that will take us to Medog, M-E-D-O-G. Then we take the Lima 1-8, Lima 1-8, and that will take us then to Ablin, A-B-L-I-N. And that is it. So now we activate and execute. Go to fix and we put an EIDW as our destination and we need a four mile circle. 
we need a 10 mile circle and a 30 mile circle around our destination airport. Go to descent, go to forecast. Transition level is set by ATC but it's about 6,000 feet here in the UK. But we are going to need to know the values for the speed and direction of wind at flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet, and at flight level 150, which is 15,000 feet, and at flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet. Q&H at our destination is 9904, a little bit on the low pressure area, and then the descent at 200 is 235 at 62, so 235 and 62, and at 150 it is 237 at 53, 237 at 53, and at 10,000 feet it is 236 at 50, 236 and 50, and then we execute that. Now we go to route, departures and arrivals, go to departures. Now I'm pretty sure that we're going to be taking off on 26 left, but we need to check in with ATIS and find out what the airport conditions are. And ATIS is 136.52, so 136.52. Gatwick Airport Information, Juliet 1042, Zulu, wind 230 at 13, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition 2500, scattered temperature 162.11, altimeter 1004, landing and departing, runway 26 left, VFR aircraft say direction of flight, all aircraft read back hold short instruction, advise controller on initial contact you have, Juliet. Right. We now know we are leaving on 26 left and we'll be going straight out, so execute that. Departures and arrivals go to arrivals. We're coming in on runway 28 left, so there it is, there's the ILS 28 left. Put that in and we'll be using the Abli 3X arrival. And the transition is Obinu. So we'll put that in and execute that. Now we go to legs. And I'm going to switch this now to plan so that we can have a look at our flight plan and see if there are any errors or discontinuity. So here you can see the first stage. So I'm going to go and step through each one of these now. There's the Valga going up to Kennet, across, and oh, there we go, straight across the area. And now across the Irish Sea. There's Ablen. There come. There's the 30 mile line that we put in, that circle. There's Silvna coming up. There's Latmo. Mavex coming up there and straight down to land on 28 left. Just as easy as that. Easy peasy. Now I'm going to switch this back to map and I'm going to change now the, the range to 20 and I'm going to put the weather on and I'm going to double click and put the data on there. You can see the circles come on. Over here I'm going to put terrain on for you and I'm going to double click data so that we can put on yours and now I'm going to turn on the TCAS so that we can be seen and see others in our vicinity and there's quite a bit of traffic in the area. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the decision height which is 50 feet at Dublin, so 5-0 is our decision height. Okay, 
and now I'm going to go to root and I'm going to request now our IFR clearance. Gatwick clearance delivery, Ryanair 186 ready to copy IFR clearance to Dublin International. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Alpha Bravo Lima India November Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain 12000 departure frequency S126.825 squat 7744 Ryanair 186 cleared to Alpha Bravo Lima India November Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain 12000 departure on 126.825 squat 7744 Ryanair 186 Redback is correct. Contact ground on 121.8 when ready to taxi. Okay. Right, we have our information and it is 12,000 feet that we climb out to, go runway heading to 12,000 feet. But up here, I'm going to put in 32,000 feet because that is going to be our cruising altitude and this is for pressurization. The elevation at our destination is 243, which is closest to 250 for our landing altitude, so we have that set. Runway 26 left is a heading of 258, so I'm going to put 258 in our course headings. And there we go, and 258 in the course headings here. I'll do yours too if that's okay, Sol. Okay. So 258. There it is. So now we have that set. Good. Now let's get our taxi clearance. Gatwick Ground, Ryanair 186, we're Kilo, ready to taxi by FR. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold shorter runway 26 left via taxiway Whiskey Alpha Echo Victor Mike contact tower on 124.225 when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 26 left via taxiway Whiskey Alpha Echo Victor Mike Ryanair 186. Right, we have our clearance and everybody's on board so I'm going to bring up the stairs and the close the hatch. There's the electric motor bringing in the stairs underneath the forward storage area. It's really neat the way that works, isn't it? Now over here I'm going to go into route, perform the initialization. Now our Reserves today are 2,671, that's 2.7, and trip and taxi is 2,798. That comes to 5,469, or 5.5. So 5.5, rounding it out, that's our plan, is 2.7 tons for reserves, cost index of course is 6, we are flying at 32,000 feet today, the cruise wind is 239 at 99, so 23999, transition altitude in the UK is 6,000 feet, so we double click the zero fuel weight and it calculates everything there and execute that. N1 limit, we'll put in the 16 degrees that we have. We're not going to bother with D rates or bumps. We'll be using flaps 10. Double click this and it gives us the center of gravity and the value on the trim wheel. Then one click on each of these buttons gives us V1 rotation speed and V2 which of course is liftoff. So now I'm going to put 145 into here. There we go. 
All right, now I'm going to check this. So I'm going to put the flight director on here, flight director on there, press the VNAV, press the LNAV, and we have a good flight. So arm the throttle, VOR1, VOR2, 1 and 2 over there as well. Right, I'm going to turn on the your damper, flight continuity light went out. Everything is looking good, all the bugs are set. I'm going to switch to RTO. Right, everybody's on board, everybody's getting their <coughs> early glasses of champagne. So we'll do the before start. So fuel is on board and correct. Windows locked. Seatbelt signs are on. And door lights are out. MCP is programmed. Takeoff thrust bugs are set. Pre-flight is complete. Rudder air alarm trim is done. Taxi takeoff briefing. Now, we need to go our nose to the right and our tail to the left. Anti-collision light is now going on. So we are now ready for a push back and start. Now, which engine would you like to start first today? Number one or number two, So It's up to you. And I, either one would be good, left or right, one or two. You want to start number one first? We can do number one. So up here, I'm going to now switch to generator one. And of course, it goes to zero because there's no electricity coming from there. But there will be when we start. So if you're ready, are you all buckled in, seat set, all right, then attendance, we are about to push back from the stand, please clear the aisle so that we can see down there to do our reversing out. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Then let's do it. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready for pushback tail to the left. Release parking brake, please. Parking brake is released. Brakes released. Okay, when we start, I'm going to now turn off the air conditioning, or the heat in this case, and get ready now to turn this. Here we go. Right, I'm now switching to engine number one. And over here, the start valve, as you can see, has opened up. There's the N2, it is spinning up nicely. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. There it is, 24. So bringing in the fuel. I'm now going to look for the engine gas temperature to rise, and there it is. Look at that. It's really cooking. There, good. I'm looking now for the low oil pressure light to go out. There it is. And this is climbing very nicely. That engine gas temperature is coming up very, very well indeed. Look at that. There, the engines have caught. Looking up here. I'm going to check to make sure I have, there it is, 115 volts coming from the engine. Switching now to engine number two. The start valve has opened. Here you can see the N2 is spinning up. Parking brake is set. And when this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. Coming up. There it is, introducing the fuel. Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the salute and release from guidance on your right and have flight. Thank you, gentlemen. There it is, it's heating up, looking for the low oil pressure light to go out now. And there it did. We're getting a good start on the right engine. Going to flaps 10. There, everything is set. Looking up here now to see if we have 115 volts, we do. As soon as this little tick mark goes off to show that we have stable light, and it has. So now I'm going to switch to the generators from our main engines. 
I'm going to turn the heat back on, turn the APU bleed off, and turn the APU off there. Now we're running strictly on our main engines. Now there's the stand number five and number four. As you can see, there's a flyby in stand number five, and British Air is on stand number four, so we couldn't get in there, but that's that's the reason for the occupation. And you can see the detail, but not all of the airport, because we are pretty much at one end of it. But there you can see all the runway information, and there's an aircraft there, looks like it's either getting ready to take off or I don't know, but we'll try to get ourselves in position anyway. But that's the detail of Gatwick Airport. Ah, oh, there's one coming in to land. We'll be departing on that same runway. By the way, our frame rate is 18, 19, 18, between 18 and 19. And this scenery is made by Gary at UK 2000. UK 2000. Okay, the Navigraph charts are there so you can see where we're going to go. We're going to go down here and make a right and then make a left to get ourselves into position. So, break off and look around, make sure everything is clear. Give ourselves a little boost to get started here. The weather is not looking too bad at the minute. It's a little on the cold side, but it is that time of year we are well into autumn and not far from winter now, so cold temperatures are the norm at this time of year. And so is unpredictable weather conditions, such as what we have here. And we turn right here. Would you stick your hand out there so that we can make our turn? Ah. Okay. You know, I'm just going to stop at this point and let you see the rest of the airport scenery here. There's Gatwick Airport. There's a lot of aircraft parked there. As you can see, there's a lot more detail. And there you can see the tower. And there are aircraft, of course, already queuing up for departure. And we're going to be going down here, down the Mike taxiway to get to the active. But that's the airport scenery. Pretty impressive, isn't it? All right, let's get ourselves moved into position. We need to go left here. Go to the whole short line and then get our clearance for takeoff. 
Gatwick Tower, Ryanair 186 at runway 26 left, ready for takeoff, IFR 2 Alpha Bravo Lima, India, November. Ryanair 186, hold short, runway 26 left, traffic is Bombardier, CRJ 700 on the runway. Hold short, runway 26 left, Ryanair 186. Right, we are holding short, the aircraft has just landed, so generators are on, check, probe heat is on, check, anti-ice not required, isolation of stop, keepers detent, right deck door closed and locked, recall check, flight controls flaps, green lights, stabilizer trim, auto brake, RTO, run, button clear, takeoff briefing, engine bleeds are now on and Start switch is continuous, cabin is secure, and we are all set now for takeoff as soon as they give us a clearance. Pacifica 30, turn next taxiway. With these two on the side of us. I'm not sure if we're going to get out ahead of them or if they're going to beat us, but we'll just have to see. Gatwick Pacific Airport 30, is very, very busy. Going to 121.8 Pacifica, one, one, three, Any other aircraft coming in? Orbit 1881 is minor miles east inbound visual runway 26 oh left approach. Orbit 1881 Gatwick Tower fly straight in runway 26 left altimeter 1004. Well, there's one nine Next miles out. Runway 26 left orbit 1881. And I think they may be cleared. Oh, there it is. There's the one coming in. Very busy airport is Gatwick. There's a lot of transatlantic traffic that comes in and out of Gatwick. American Pacific one mile turn next taxiway. to make a rolling start on this one. So all lights are on. Starting the clock. Now we're moving into position. Traffic is flowing seven three seven on the runway. That's us. <laughs> Hold short runway two six left. Orbit six two. All right, there we go. Engines are now and one. Toga, and here we go, full power. V1, rotate. Rotate. V2. V2. And we have positive rate, gear up. Lights off. Okay. And one eight six contact cut with departure of one two six point eight two five. And going to off. We're now on autopilot, climbing very nicely. Control is released to go to work and going to flaps one.
We're climbing out very, very nicely. And there's the view below us of the south coast of England, you can see there. That's the channel out there. And we're climbing out very nicely. We've got cloud. Okay, and flaps up. And the heading now is set. Okay, let's check. Engine bleeds are on, check. Backs, auto, check. Landing gear up, no lights. Flaps up, no lights. Altimeter set both. And we are on our way. All right, so we're on our way to Dublin. We'll be crossing over the southeast part of England and southwest part of England. We'll then be crossing over southern Wales, over the Irish Sea, to make our approach onto uh, the main runway at Dublin. So, why don't you go on into the back and get some of that champagne and caviar because it's all free and it is the best French champagne that we could find. And I'll give you a shout as soon as we are on our long final to come into Dublin, okay? See you in a little bit. soul come on back in and take your seat did you get enough to drink oh good I'm glad you did because having a lot of drink is a lot easier to land the aeroplane <laughs> now we are in a little bit of cloud but we're coming through and we're just coming up to the 30 mile circle. So I'm going to see if I can reach and I'm going to tune to the tower and I'm going to request full stop. Dublin Tower, line at 186630 miles southeast to land. Ryanair 186 Dublin Tower, make straight in runway 28, altimeter minor minor 6. Fly straight in, runway 28, line 186. Right, we are cleared to go straight in to runway 28 left, and we're all set to go. Right, I've got pass and seatbelt signs are on, I have the lights on because we're t below 10,000 feet and need to slow up just a little bit here but we're on course 
we're just coming up to Sivna uh, Waypoint and I'm now going to go to Flaps 5. Okay, we've broken out of the clouds, we're descending okay. We had some pretty strong crosswinds as we got up to our cruising altitude. It's a busy airport is Dublin. But we're on course. Everything is looking good. Nine and nine six is the Q and H at our destination. The Dublin BOR is over in that direction a little bit, but we'll be intercepting the final coming up when we get to LACMO. And we need to be about 180 knots at about that point. Plenty of cloud around though, as you can see. And it's, uh, we have being blown about a bit. Well, it looks like we're going to lose visibility, but we're plus six degrees, so we don't have any icy issues. All right, I'm switching now to my chart for landing and coming up on the next turn at Avenue we'll be making a slight left turn and then we'll intercept the final at lap mode. Now coming up on Obinu that is our initial approach fix so very important that we have everything set. We need to be above 3,000 feet at that point. We are just crossing over Obimu. Okay, now we're making for the intercept course. There's the great big smokestacks. That's one of the points of reference. But we're on our descent and everything is working out. When we get to Latmo, we'll be at 3,000 feet. And then we'll be intercepting the final. Look at this. This is great visibility. We are 36, 35, 36 frames per second not bad and there's a lot of weather activity going on at the minute right i'm going to bring this down a little bit so we can see what's going on here so did they give you enough to eat back there as well oh good you get Plenty of caviar, I hope. Brilliant, brilliant. All right, 
everything is looking good and pressurization is correct seat belt signs are on recall is check auto brake is on landing data for briefing we're all on course right we are now turning on to our final course we are at 3,000 feet and we are now on final so I am locked on to the localizer we are 11 DME miles from the runway and I have no visibility <laughs> none at all coming up on 10 miles so we'll go to flaps 10 Coming up on Maxev, we'll be at 2,500 feet at Maxev. Our minimums are 50 feet. Alright, going on to 278, which is our final course. Everything is looking good. We still have cloud. We do not have the runway in sight. But... 2,500. 2,500. Check. I am now on the glide slope. We are on the glide slope. We're on final on the glide slope to land. And everything is looking good. Still no visibility, so I can't see. Ah, we're breaking out below the cloud. Oh, I have the runway in sight, but you know what? We've got a vicious crosswind. Right, gear down, flaps down. All lights are on, engines continuous, crew. Clear to land runway 28. Clear to land runway 28. Okay, and crew, prepare for landing. The runway is in sight, but we have a vicious, vicious crosswind. Ooh, 21 knots. Okay, let's see if we can do this with a crosswind landing. This is a strong cross window. I have control. Do you trust me? Oh, good, I hope so. <laughs> well, still going down, we have two white, two red. And slow up a bit here. To white, to red, coming down. One thousand. I'm having to crab in because crosswind is coming straight across us. Well, we're going to be landing sideways. Ah. Five hundred. Four hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred. And oh, we are definitely crabbed. One hundred. 50, 40, 30. And we are down. Reverse thrusters are on. And that was a terrific crosswind. Going around, 
world travel. Eight one eight niner contact Dublin approach on one one niner point five five. Oh, we're turning off here. Orbit five four one three is six miles east inbound ILS runway two eight approach. Ryanair one eight six turn next taxiway. Orbit five four one three Dublin Tower make straight in runway two eight altimeter niner niner. Ryanair one eight six contact ground on one two one point eight Pacifica eight six seven five clear for takeoff runway two eight. Orbit five four one three clear to land runway two eight. Going to one two one point eight prime at one eight six. Clear to land runway two eight orbit five four one three. Clear for takeoff runway two eight Pacific eight six seven five. Right, going through the cleanup. Seven three four five ready to go runway two eight IFR two Pacifica seven three. Released to go to work. Right, we're going to make our way now to the parking stands and the parking stands that I believe that you must have come in on would be 412 or that vicinity. So let's see where it is. Oh, 412 is out there. Okay. Then we need to come in on one of the 400s on Pier 1. That's We don't need the cargo terminal. We need Pier 4. Pier 4. So that's the 400. So let's see what's available. Okay. Right, here we go then, let's taxi to the everything is cleaned up That was quite a vicious crosswind landing. That one's going around. This is Dublin International that we're coming up into here. And we're looking for the South Apron. So if we continue on this, it will take us right on to Link 1 and then straight to the South Apron. So this should be a fairly easy one to find. Beautiful detail though. This is made by MK Studios. MK Studios. Should try to get some video of this. That's looking out at the side. The 
And there's all the main terminal buildings up ahead. And there's one aircraft that just landed. But we're going to go straight, provided there are no issues. But Dublin, EIDW's airport scenery is made by MK Studios. There's a little bit of a queue of aircraft there. So let's hope that we don't run into any of that. We want to go straight across. over this one and everything looks clear we go over here and then we're on the link one so there's the Bravo 2 we're doing fine then link one ahead and then we'll make our left turn and park at one of the stands on the other side of Pier 3 or is it Pier 4 which I'm thinking is the one that you came in on still on Bravo 1 Kamikazes are out ha! But I think so that you were at this stand somewhere in here. Okay, this is the Link 1. We're Bravo 1. We're doing fine. Okay. See, there's the Aer Lingus cargo out there. We'll find ourselves a place here. Now this is 406. And as 406 center, 406 right. We're on the apron. So we'll continue down until we get down there. then make a left turn and then come in on 409 Charlie. Okay, that's the one. 409 Charlie. And okay, there's the turn to 409 Charlie. Okay, so Okay, coming in now. And slowing up. And... 
start. Brake on. Okay, lights off. And engine shut down. Okay. Starting the shutdown procedure. Okay. The gate is down. There. Stairs are down, I should say. Door is open. People are getting off. All right, let's just finish up the shutdown. And all lights are off. Decast is off. Okay. Right. Fuel is off. APU is off. Battery is off. Shutdown is complete. Look at that. Easy peasy. Well, Sol, that was a very interesting flight. I don't know if you had strong crosswinds uh, like that when you were coming in, but we had 24 knots at one point, then it slowed down to 20 knots. So we were still at 20 knots crosswind when we touched down. I mean, coming in sideways, that's... That was a tough landing. We might have uh, knocked a few glasses loose in the galley, though. Mmm. I hope they don't send me a bill for that. <laughs> well, Sol, I hope that you enjoyed the flight. We recreated that Aer Lingus flight between Gatwick and Dublin. And here is where all of them come in. So we are here at 409 Charlie. I think this is where you you came in at, from the best I could find out. It was one of these uh, stands right here. Because then you would go through the international section in here, go through American Customs and Immigration, and then out onto your transatlantic flight. So, I hope that you had a good flight to Orlando and that you had a good time in Florida. So that's what I, <laughs> I wish I could have gone with you. I've got some good friends that live in Orlando, priest friends, of course. And so it would have been a lot of fun to stay with them and, uh, and catch up. But that's for another day. So thank you for the suggestion. Do appreciate the invitation to make this flight. And I'll see you and everyone else be good. And I'll see you here at the same channel next week for a flight of Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.